Hello, welcome to my IDS Vision Channel session, Rapid Prototyping with Camera Applications. Today, I'm going to talk about um, the, the problems you have uh, with um, developing camera applications or computer vision applications using C++ or something similar. Or why do we actually need rapid prototyping? Then I'm going to talk about why Python is the, the right tool um, for, um, for rapid prototyping. And then I'll, I'll show you a live demo um, of how that could look. So, what are the problems? When developing camera applications or computer vision applications, you don't develop everything yourself, but rather uh, you uh, use existing libraries uh, for much of the functionality. In C or in C++, it's always a big pain to, to integrate external libraries um, into your own development environment. And even once you've done that, um, you'll typically have to try lots of different approaches until you find the right algorithm for your problem. And even then, you still need to, to fine-tune to get exactly the, the right results. That means you have to do many, many iterations, which will be very um, time-consuming um, when using C or C++ because you have to make a change and then you have to compile, which takes always takes a long time, and then you have to test. And then you see uh, it's not uh, quite what you expected. You make another change, compile again, and test again, and, and this, uh, so on and so on. So that's an annoyingly slow cycle especially if you make many, many small changes. Instead, you would like to have to uh, make a change and immediately see the results. So that's where rapid prototyping comes in. Rapid prototyping is a way to quickly try new ideas um, or to make small changes and immediately see the results or try a completely different uh, result a completely different approach or, or different library um, without redesigning your whole application. There are um, many uh, different um, tools for rapid prototyping, but uh, lots of them are quite expensive, like for example, MATLAB. So instead today we are looking uh, at Python uh, as a rapid prototyping tool. Why Python? Python is a programming language that's very easy to learn. So if you know any programming at all, you will be able to pick it up very quickly. Um, it's free, it's open source, um, free even for commercial use. It's very widely used, has a great community. So there are lots of um, uh, examples, tutorials, documentation available online. Um, it's an inter interpreted language, not a compiled one. So um, you can just start typing, start programming, and immediately see the results. So you can program interactively, which is exactly what we want when doing rapid prototyping. It's also very easy to um, add new functionality by using external libraries. Typically, you just have one command line call um, uh, to install a new library, including um, all of its dependencies and everything you need to get started. And since Python is so widely used, um, there are libraries available for, for everything. Uh, especially when it comes to computer vision and AI or deep learning. Uh, much of the research community and many of the commercial players use Python and publish their libraries, their code um, with Python support. One of these libraries is IDS Peak. IDS Peak is the, the API to access IDS UI Plus cameras. You can access the, all the connected cameras, control the camera settings, and um, acquire images from the cameras. It's available in C and C++ and Python and also .NET. 
and uh, its usage is uh, in all these uh, programming languages is pretty much identical. So it's easy to, to port an IDS Peak application from one language to another. Um, you get uh, you also get uh, the full IDS support um, for each available language. The whole package, including um, all supported languages, drivers, applications, tools, documentation, is available for free at the IDS website. So um, enough of the theory, let's do a quick demo. I'll show you how to access um, a UI Plus uh, camera using the IDS Peak API. We'll display the, the camera image and do some basic um, operations like um, looking at the actual image data and displaying the images. Um, then we add some external libraries. Um, let's uh, open CV to do some basic computer vision stuff and PyTorch for AI object detection. I'll use a Jupyter notebook for this demo. As the name says, it's a, a notebook where you can add comments and images and links and stuff. But you can also add Python code blocks and execute them as needed. Um, and it will immediately show the results. You can also jump around the notebook and re-execute uh, different code blocks in any order um, just um, without uh, rerunning the whole program. You will be able to download uh, the Jupyter Notebook um, at the session notes. And we also have a tech tip on the IDS website explaining how to set up the Jupyter Notebook. There will also be a link in the session notes. So let's get started with the demo. Here we go. So this is um, Jupyter Lab that runs the Jupyter Notebook. It runs inside a browser and it's pretty easy to use. So you have um, different um, blocks of uh, either text. It's, um, you can just click on it and edit the text. Right there. Um, and you can use Markdown to uh, format uh, uh, the text and then it will just display it uh, immediately. You can also add links and images and uh, anything you can think of um, pretty easily. But the uh, more, more interesting part of this is of course the, the actual code. The, uh, these gray blocks here, these are Python code blocks. So you can just um, click on them as well and edit them. Um, and when you um, print something, it will be displayed just below the, the code block um, once you execute it. So to execute this code, this is just some Python code to initialize IDS Peak and find, um, find all the cameras connected to my system and, and print their names. So let's execute this and do that by, by clicking on this button up here. And see, there we got, um, we found one device, one, one camera. It's a uh, USB 3 vision camera. Um, it's connected here to my system. So let's, let's open that camera. Um, again, you can use this button up here or just press uh, shift and enter to execute this block. And there we see it, it opened this camera we, we saw earlier. The same one. So now we can can use that. Um, so uh, in this uh, while doing this rapid prototyping, we do, don't need to have the camera running continuously in the background, but rather we want to have an image right uh, when we say now give me an image. So we activate the software trigger mode for the camera um, in this code block. Oh, there was an error. So if there's an error, they're um, displayed uh, immediately right below the code block. And it shows here um, where um, where did the error occur and some, some error message. Um, so it it's, does not like this O and N. Oh, okay, that's wrong. It should be on with just one N. So let's fix that. 
just edit that and re-execute. So no output, no errors, means that, that went okay this time. So let's start the, the image acquisition. Again, no, no errors. Um, so that went fine as well. Um, so let's do uh, uh, change some of the camera settings. Um, just uh, the ex exposure time for now. This value is in microseconds, so we have eight uh, eight thousand microseconds, eight milliseconds. Let's let's try that. And now let's grab an image. So we execute uh, the software trigger. Execute the software trigger, and then we wait for the, the image to finish. Once it's finished, uh, there will be the, the image data will be in this buffer, but that's um, a raw buyer image. Those are not really nice to look at. So instead, we use the um, IDS Peak Image Processing Library to convert the the raw image to an RGB image. And then we let's display that in this block. So there we have an image. Okay, it's, it's pretty dark, but we'll fix that uh, soon. But first, let's um, have a play around with that image a little bit. What can we do with the image? We can already see it's about a uh, thousand rows high and a uh, thousand four hundred columns wide. Let's look at the exact numbers. Numbers. So um, here we go. We got 1,080 rows, 1,400 columns, and um, three channels. That's um, red, green, and blue. That's since we turned it into an RGB image, that also looks correct. And then let's have a look at the data. Actually, of the actual image data. Let's see, of the first 10 pixels in row 100. So here is the, the picture we had earlier. And the first parameter is the, the row, so row 100. And then we go from pixel 0 to pixel 10 exclusively, and then display all the R, G, and B values. Let's see. So there we get 10 um, RGB values. Now that we, we, we can access the, these, um, these, these pixels, so we can also change them, right? So let's turn the top left corner um, of the image uh, red. So again, um, row 0 to 100, column 0 to 100, and uh, RG and B. We will um, put uh, an RGB uh, value in there, which is just red, no green and blue, and then display the, the image. And there we are. Ah, see, there we got the whole red um, square on the top left. Hmm. But now, now I got this red square in there. I don't really care, want this red square. Um, um, I only um, care about my, my tools here in the, in the image. So let's do a region of interest. Um, let's see, start maybe at pixel uh, 150, uh, at uh, column 150, and also need, don't need this uh, brown uh, stuff over there. So let's start uh, stop at um, pixel 1350. Um, but we use all rows, so let's go 50 and 1350. And let's see what we got here. Okay, no more, no more red box, no more brown um, uh, stuff on the side. Uh, it looks like a nice picture. Let's, so since we are going to work with this, let's put that over there. So we always have it in view. Ah. Okay. Now we have did some things with the image, but actually we wanted to use external libraries like OpenCV. OpenCV, I'm sure you all know, um, 
is one of the most popular free open source um, computer vision libraries with extensive, fun extensive functionality like color conversions and transformations and all that. And as I said, in Python, you, you can easily integrate um, external libraries. Simply install OpenCV with a single command line um, command. Um, and then you just import, uh, import it and then you can use it. So um, let's do something simple, like look at a um, gray value um, histogram to see if it's really as dark as we as it looks. So let's turn that um, the, our picture, our region of interest picture from RGB into a um, gray image. Yeah, that's gray. And then do a um, calculate a histogram on that. Yeah, also put a link to the histogram um, documentation in there, but it's pretty simple. Just um, put the image into the function and let's display that. So we see here a large peak in the, in the lower um, values. So we, and we don't use a lot of the other values we don't use at all. So that's pretty much what we expected because the, the image is pretty dark. So what can we do? Um, let's just um, adjust the uh, exposure time so we get some more light in our image. We can now just go back to the um, earlier we set the exposure time. So let's just go back to that. We can, for example, use here the table of contents and see this exposure time. Yeah. So instead of 8,000, let's do some more. Let's try this and grab a new image. Ah, oh, that looks much better. But our region of interest is still very dark, so we need to update that as well. Go here and execute this code block again. And see, now the region of interest is um, also much lighter. Let's um, check the histogram again. Execute this. Ah, now. Um, we still have uh, some pixels, uh, some values uh, not used, but it's um, that looks much better. Okay, we could still uh, play around with this some more, but um, it's uh, good enough for now. Let's move on to AI, to deep learning. Um, here we're gonna use another external library called PyTorch. That's the deep learning framework uh, library developed by Facebook's AI um, research lab. Um, again, we can just install it with a, a single uh, command line uh, command and then just start using it by um, importing the library. Now, um, in your own applications, you would, of course, use um, train your own models to fit your, um, your scenario. But for this demo, we just download um, a pre-trained model from the internet. It's called uh, You Only Look Once um, Deep Learning Model. And uh, it's pretty simple to use. We can just say, um, uh, PyTorch, download uh, um, this model for me, because it's available in the Torch Hub. Um, also, um, here, I put a link in there as well. So I already downloaded it, so it should go uh, pretty fast. This here, it is uh, cached locally. And now it prints out some values, uh, some model parameters, but I don't really know I, and I don't care. I just want to use this. So let's do that. Let's uh, apply this um, deep learning model to our region of interest image. See what happens. Okay, it processed one image um, um, and it found five scissors. It does not look like five scissors in my image. Hmm. Let's see. What? Um, let's draw these, these, uh, these results on the image. See if uh, we can figure out what's going on here. Okay, so uh, it 
detected the screwdriver as a scissor and, uh, um, and the pen as a scissor and the screwdriver again. Uh, so that's not right. So at this point, you would, of course, um, try to figure out what went wrong. So maybe the, the model doesn't have um, any any training data for screwdrivers and pens. Or maybe you can just sort out the, the, the ones with a very low value here. That's the probability, the detection probability. Um, so you would go back and uh, retrain your model or try to change the lighting or something. But um, for, uh, for this demo, that's, uh, well, uh, that's good enough for now. <laughs> so now, of course, you would do something, uh, once you figured out what went wrong with the model, you would do something with the results, like maybe send the positions of the scissors to your robot and have them pick up the scissors and start cutting or something. Uh, there are also many libraries for these kinds of thi things in Python. You can um, uh, network messaging or directly a uh, robot control uh, um, and libraries like that. But um, that depends on your use case. Yeah. So once you figure out um, um, how, uh, once you get your prototype working correctly and um, what to do with the results, well, you're pretty much done. You can here um, stop all the, the running cameras. And now we can export the notebook, this whole notebook we saw here, we, we worked on here, uh, just as an executable Python file. So we'll just do um, export notebook as executable strip, script that basically turns the notebook into a Python file with the, the notes as Python comments and the code, Python code just um, like you entered it here in the notebook. But um, watch out, it just, uh, it doesn't, uh, uh, it just executes it just uh, in the uh, same order as you, you entered them, not in the same order we executed it, everything. So you can, in the notebook, you can jump around and re-execute code blocks, but uh, this uh, file just, um, goes straight from the uh, top to bottom and execute each, uh, executes each block in turn. So uh, maybe you still need to work a little bit on it. Um, but also Python is, um, well, it is great for, for programming, for interactive programming. It's, so it's uh, great for quick prototyping. It's um, not so quick to for when executing the, the code. Um, it's a lot slower than compiled optimized uh, C++. It has some trouble with multi-threading. So for a real-world application, you might need to, to port your, your Python uh, file uh, to a more performing uh, language like C++. But that's um, pretty easy. For example, the, the Peak API, as I said earlier, is works just the same in, in Python and in C++, so it's easy to, to port. Um, OpenCV and PyTorch also have um, C++ interfaces, which are pretty similar. And most of the other computer vision machine learning libraries also uh, work very similar in C++ um, or are originally built in C++. So you can export this, this notebook as basically a, a blueprint, blueprint for porting um, uh, this Python code into, um, uh, into C++ or something similar. The um, resulting HTML file, let's have a look at that. You can just export it here. And open that. It's basically the, the same file um, with uh, all your notes, with all your code blocks, and the results you have. Um, you had um, here the, the images are displayed, and so um, you have have the the code you need to to implement in um, a different language, and you have the uh, you have the documentation why you need this code, and you have the results you are expecting. So. Now, porting this prototype to a different language uh, should be very, very quick. 
much quicker than the starting with C++ and doing the whole development in C++. Um, yeah, that's pretty much wonder what I wanted to show. Let's see, maybe I have one more thing. Yes, so I, I in the demo, I showed you the, uh, how, how to uh, use Python for prototyping, for, for trying new, new ideas, for including new libraries, trying out uh, new things. Uh, and how easy it is um, to do that. And um, IDS Peak Python uh, uh, interface allows you to access the IDS uh, UI Plus cameras in Python. And once you finish your prototype, you might want to port the prototype to C++ and the uh, IDS uh, Peak C++ interface helps uh, with this uh, porting process because it works just the same as it works in Python, or it also works the same in .NET. So it should be pretty quick to, to port, port your um, peak uh, application to a different language. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for listening to my session.